Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today I would like to explain about my assignment 3 which is uh, I choose chapter 5 to do some self reflections and relate to the relating article. Okay. First of all, my name is Nur Afiq Alim Damad and I choose chapter 5 which is International Capital Structure and the Cost of Capital. Okay, first, what is capital structure? Capital structure is a firm mixture of debt and equity and is called a financing mix. The level of debt and equity may vary over time, but most firms keep the financing mix close to a uh, optimal capital structure. Optimal capital structure it can lower a cost of capital and it will increase and maximize the shareholder wealth. And then the second one is cost of capital. Cost of capital is the investor who provided the fund. They will expect to receive a return on the investment. So the cost of capital is the minimum rate of returns an investment project must generate in order to pay its financing costs. So uh, this is um, formula CAPM, which is Capital Asset Pricing Model, to know uh, the expected return on the stock investment. So uh, now I will show some example about the cost of capital in segmented versus integrated market. Okay, uh, for the segmented um, market like this to know the cost of capital like domestic us cemented in the country only the example is in the country only for integrated is worldwide overseas is open so uh, for the first example uh, they use the beta 1.0 and um, average beta risk level is 1.0 and they assume that us market portfolio is 12% uh, and US risk free is 12% interest rate and treasury bill rate is 6% and US capital market are segmented from the rest of world. So the expected return on IBM is 12%. When we fill in the formula, we will get cost of capital for segmented market is 12% for US. And the second one is example for the integrated market it just seem like segmented but we uh, change the beta which is 0 0.8 beta so the amount of uh, expected return which, uh, which is uh, for integrated market is 10.8 percent so it can sh it show that the cost of capital uh, Cost of capital will be decreased uh, when we use integrated market because integrated market has a lot of foreign investors. So here conclusion is lower beta measure of 0.8 investor who require a lower return on IBM stock and the integration and they will under segmentations. Okay, now I will explain about cross border. Uh, listing of stocks. Okay, cross border listing is uh, like we put all the stock in the LSE, London Stock Exchange. So, uh, when we uh, put all the stock there, they have a benefit and cost. So, for the benefit, the first one is the company can expand its potential investor base, which will lead to a higher stock price and a lower cost of capital. Like when we uh, put all the stock in LSE, it will have a high demand because uh, it uh, will have um, from around the world. So it's obviously, so it will have a high demand. And then uh, the second one is cross listing create a secondary market for the company share which facilitates raising new capital in foreign market. And the third one is cross listing can enhance the liquidity of the company stock. Okay, for the cost, uh, the first one is it can be costly to meet the disclosure and listing requirement imposed by the foreign exchange and regulatory authority because, like we know, uh, every stock must have their own requirement and policy. 
and the second one is controlling insider may find it difficult to continue to derive private benefits once the company is cross listed on the foreign exchange because like when um uh when we open the stock at, at lse so it uh hard it's hard to control because the company has a lot of uh a lot of uh, investors from various country and then uh, the third one is once company stock is traded in obviously market it can be volatility spill over from this market because like uh, once we uh, put the stock in the lse so uh, it will um uh the, the, the with the uh, a lot of risk like political risk and other risks and then now um okay pricing to market phenomenon it's like um pricing to market phenomenon is like a restrictions to protect the sovereignty of the country so for example like uh, suppose uh, suppose the foreigner if they are allowed they will like to buy 30 percent of the foreign firm but because of ownership constraint they impose on foreigner they can purchase uh at most 20 percent because they want to protect the sovereignty of the country okay, to conclude uh, this chapter what i have learned is like um cost of capital actually is an opportunity is an opportunity cost of investment uh, it used to attract more investors to invest in the country and it one of the uh, method to determine whether the investment is work or not and it's also give um like um uh, knowledge for me uh, if i become the investor person later i should uh, first consider about my country first about the uh, to protect my sovereignty yes we want the a lot of foreign investor to invest in our country but if it a lot of uh, foreign investor they may be um uh, uh, interfere and you will be like uh, they will shape our government policy and so on so um, we need to impose some restrictions to uh, allow them to uh, invest in our country and now um, for the related article, uh, the example given in the slide is a uh, Nestle company. So it's like uh, for the point is Nestle used to issue two different classes of common stock, which is bearish share and registered share. So this uh, share is like to protect the sovereignty of the country because foreigners were only allowed to buy bearish share, so citizens could buy registered share and the Bearish stock was more expensive. Uh, this is some impulse of restriction to protect the sovereignty country. And the conclusion is on November 18, 1988, Nestle lifted restriction imposed on foreigners, allowing them to hold registered share as well as bearish share. And then this is my second article that I found, uh, which is um, the case of dually listed stock on the Tokyo and New York Stock Exchange. Okay, uh, this article paper is analyzed price and uh, written for 17 stock which are dually listed on the Tokyo and New York Stock Exchange. So, uh, in this article, uh, these two countries is simultaneously uh, violate uh, LOP, which is low one price. So, um, the a major uh, cultural and other economic difference between Japanese and American capital market, and it has also been argued that many Japanese market is unlike America because they are segmented and they do not respond to change in the world economic factor. So Japanese prove that restriction and cultural differences are significant enough to cause the market for equity security in Japan to be segmented. So the, the summary of the article that I found is um, there are 
Actually, there are major differences between the Japanese and American capital market, such as taxations, requirement for foreign purchaser, investor attitude towards saving and equity investment, and the protective nature and action of government official. So, however, even with all the evident cultural, institutional, and regulatory restrictions, the result of this article indicates that the price and returns for stock really listed on the Tokyo and the New York Stock Exchange as a big pattern of return which are well integrated in terms of what uh, of, of work market condition and which are not indicative of segmented market. So uh, lastly, um, it can conclude that the Tokyo segmented uh, Tokyo. Tokyo stock exchange is not a segmented market. So, uh, this, uh, this all for my presentation. So, thank you to Seki, which, uh, because I I understand this chapter, uh, because of the recorded voice that you, um, uh, uh, that you give in the WhatsApp. So, I hope what I understand is, um. Good. So thank you.